In this video, I wanted to show you how you can actually set up this augmented reality and auto one one app. So to start off with, there is three different components. There is the front end, which is WebXR. There's the back end, which is auto one one one. And then there's the proxy pass server. So we're not going to focus so much on installing uh, auto one one one. There's a bunch of tutorials. I'll link some of them in the description. Uh, the WebXR uh, that should also be uh, that's hosted on GitHub, but you can also self host it as well. Um, if you host it off of just kind of any sort of uh, basic HTML presenting, like it's, it's a static site. So it's a really simple site host um and then the proxy pass server is required because uh webxr needs a secure environment you can't call http requests from an https request or else it kind of like the browser gets upset so uh we're doing a proxy pass that way um the other reason is that um auto 111 can serve with ssl but it requires uh actual certificates so you can't use self-signed certificates or at least that's what i found there shouldn't be any need for any extra installations because it uses all of the internals that auto 111 already uses and so um um, yeah, there isn't really any extra requirement. So basically what it should look like on your machine is that you should have the auto on one run running as well as the proxy pass at the same time on your desktop or on your kind of local machine, then you should be able to start up the web app and it should be able to communicate. There is going to be a little bit of a hiccup the first time you do this because the certificate is self-signed and Chrome doesn't like self-signs. So you have to go directly to the website or your private IP address first, accept the certificate and then go on to start the app. Uh, I don't really know of an alternative right now. It's a little bit unfortunate, but that's just kind of how things are. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, once you've accepted the certificate, you can go back to the web app and then it should work perfectly fine. It's just, it doesn't like the idea that you are using a self-signed certificate in this way, apparently. Um, yeah. So in terms of the usage, you have to capture the depth first, and that also captures an image that will be sent off to the auto 111. Uh, to capture the depth, you have to click it twice. I'm experiencing some bug in the future. It should only be once, but for now you have to click it twice. Um, and then that captures the depth and also the image, and then that gets sent to auto 111, and then it gets sent back. Uh, and so there's probably going to be quite a few errors on your first attempt. Um, in particular, a lot of these things have to be aligned correctly. <laughs> Another limitation has to do with doing portrait mode versus landscape mode. So uh, right now I've mostly optimized it for portrait mode, um, but then in the future I am gonna get into landscape mode. One of the things that gets it to be a bit of a headache is uh, landscape mode is different between whether you enter AR or you start in AR versus when you flip your phone partway through AR. It gets like, it just gets confusing in terms of the, the details. It's so crazy how you can kind of just set up a few books and you can get a 3D scene out of that now. Like this is really bad quality, but like in the future, this is gonna be pretty game changing. Like. Um, just being able to kind of like mess around with things in the real world and then just like record that as a 3D object. Like you can do that now, but it's really difficult and it requires quite a bit of equipment, but like just with a cell phone and like, I think it could be really fun to just add, I don't know, like the photogrammetry stuff is already getting really popular, but having like transformative pho photogrammetry, like being able to sculpt something out of clay and then doing all the texturing. Yeah, I'd, like it, it, it's going to get really crazy real quickly. I also made it so you can save the 3D meshes. They aren't super great, but it is really like, it's kind of exciting to see what's going to happen in the future because like they aren't great meshes, but they just give you the idea. Like imagine if in the future, like the 3D workflow is just like, oh, I need to make a castle in this video game. Guess I'm going to go make a snow for <laughs> like, it's just, it's going to get weird. And it's, I don't know. I'm kind of excited about it. This is one of the more confusing software installations that I put together. I've tried to make it as simple as possible, but if you do have any difficulties, please let me know. I really want to make this as simple as possible so that it's like as accessible as possible um and it's definitely not like as ideal as i would like it to be yet